So I'm going to talk about some of the high-level meta that the players at the real top class use, and I'd say it's hard to really apply it at any level lower than the like absolute top level currently, but because these are the players that a lot of people watch, a lot of players aim to play the same way or use similar ideas. So even in the past, like one of the big ideas is that you want to force your opponent to do a big move and then you counter their big move and win the round. But something that I feel like has changed is that the idea of what a big move is is now in many cases like just sending a three chain or a four chain or a five chain is in some ways too big. That's a big move. And if you can force your opponent to do that with like a one chain or a two chain, you can then counter that and then get an advantage. So like it used to be more that you're trying to force your opponent to send their main chain or which is like a really long chain, the one that you're building up the whole round. And once that happens, you have the advantage. But now it's like, sometimes you're just trying to force your opponent to send like a three or a four or a five chain, and then you can take the advantage from that. So what you'll see is that in the mid game, they're generally built up in a way where they have a lot of options to attack or defend. So if you just look at this position from Momokin, if he clears the screen, he has a 2-chain. If he clears this red, he has a 2-chain. If he puts another red here, he, he can make a 3-chain. If he clears the purples, he can make a 2-double, th 3-double for a lot of power. If he adds a purple here, he can make a 3-chain off the greens. If he gets red-green, he can make a 3-chain. If he adds some extra colors, he can make a 4-5-chain, or five chain maybe. Or you could connect it left, like put a purple here and here and clear the greens and make a 5-chain. There's just so many <laughs> options available. So if Delta were to do something like just send a small 3-chain, then Moken has so many options available that like no matter what colors he draws, he's going to draw something that can counter it pretty much. Or at least that's the idea. And obviously you have to be really good to figure out where to place the colors, the specific colors you're drawing to counter correctly, but at this level they can do it almost every time. So you can't do something like just send it, like Delta has a three chain on the red, but you can't send something like that because Momokin just has so much potential to counter no matter what colors he draws. So instead you want to send something smaller usually, so Momokin goes with this one double, and a line of garbage can cause problems. Here it wouldn't be too bad because Delta has this height difference so he can tank it pretty well, but he still doesn't necessarily want to receive that garbage, and since Momokin has now used some of his resources already, now Delta can respond and make like a three chain to counter back, and it's not uh, it's not the same as if Delta were to just make a three chain out of the blue because Momokin has already used some of his resources now. So now, like I said, Momokin's form is so flexible that almost no matter what colors he draws, he can counter this three chain. Like, the purple would be a big counter. That might be what he's looking for, but there's no purples. So the green would be a good counter. And he ends up going with the green this time. So, he's got the counter, but it's not as big as he would have wanted it to be because you want to counter and send a lot more garbage over, but he just, maybe he didn't get the colors he wanted specifically, or um, it's also part of, partly because he had to use, he used some of his resources with the one chain, like I was saying. So there's the counter, but Delta still has something similar where he has a lot of options on his build where like this red is going to make a three chain as it is but depending on the colors he draws he could go um, look at either side to make a counter so he ends up making a counter using the right side mostly and this is 
like pretty much the ideal counter. It was only one garbage, but again, because Momokin was forced to use up some of his resources, Delta can now go on the offensive, like counter and attack at the same time. So he's countering and attacking, and this is a three double, and this is pretty much like the ideal size chain you want in this situation, but Momokin finds a way to counter anyway. And that's like the ideal counter you want as Momokin as well, pretty much. Because, so you want it to be fast and you want it to counter over by a decent amount. So like, you want to see big connections and then you want it to stop as soon as it counters over by a good amount. So that's like two lines, that's a pretty good amount. And if you can do even more, that's nice, but you can't always do more than that. But, so it's the same with like Delta here, you want to counter over and you want your chains to be big and fast. So like three double with power is the type of thing you're looking for. If you do something that's big but takes longer, again, you're giving the opponent more time to make a better counter than you, and then just, you're probably going to lose. And if you do something that's smaller, then you don't really have an advantage, and sometimes you're at a disadvantage. Here it ends up pretty even, so both players are roughly even. And then when Momokin has to clear this one chain, then Delta has the peace advantage, so Delta, and Delta also has a little garbage, so what he really wants to do is send, like, send something to both take advantage of the peace advantage he has and to clear off the garbage. So he's probably looking for a purple, but it doesn't come. But instead he makes a one chain, and it's the same idea. You want to use your advantage, clear off the garbage, and send some garbage to the opponent. And now they're still in this state where, like, you don't want to, unless you have, like, a chain that you think is almost perfect, you don't want to send your main chain. You want to send something small and force your opponent to send something big. So both players are in that mindset now, but Delta gets to it first, and Delta gets a two chain off. And Momokin has the red-blue and could send a big chain, but again, if you send... Like, this wouldn't connect all the way, because the greens, he needs one more green in column one to connect his main chain. But if you send it a chain this big, Delta is going to, like, you expect that Delta will have a solid counter to it. Because it takes so long that Delta will know how big it is, and then he'll also have the time to build up a counter. So, instead of sending his big chain here, Momokin just takes the garbage, and then he's trying to do the same thing, he's trying to send something small, here it's a three chain, because because he took the garbage, he has some ex extra resources, so he can go even bigger on his pokes, so he's going to send a three chain and try to force Delta to do something big that he can counter, and again, this is a big move from Delta, it's like a seven chain, or an eight chain seven i think so like it's good but because it's so big momokin has time to see how big it is and then try and counter it so it's taking a long time to resolve and during that whole time momokin can just place pieces down so it's a seven chain here and then momokin is able to make an eight chain so, like, like I was saying, you want it to be, you want it to counter over by a lot, but not use a lot more Puyo. I don't know if I said exactly that the first time, but <laughs> you don't want to use too many more Puyo, but you want to counter over by a lot. And an 8 chain is the perfect thing to do that against a big 7 chain. So it counters over by a lot, but he still has Puyo left over. So now Delta's forced to send the rest of what he has to counter back, and Momokin has time to build and try and counter. And here it kind of comes down to a luck of the draw, but 
Mumo can barely draws what he needs. And now it's kind of down to luck, to luck of the draw for Delta and the decisions on where he decides to place his pieces. But Mamokin ends up winning the round. And you can kind of say that the real turning point was that when Mamokin made this three chain, Delta didn't have a play other than to send a really big chain. So Mamokin kind of forced Delta to use a big chain. And then Mamokin was able to counter the big chain. And then there was a, more to the round, but that in the end caused Mamokin to win the round. So sometimes, even though you play like the right idea, it's still hard to convert it into a win. But these players are really good at doing it anyway. So. <laughs> And now for one other round. So again, the idea is that you first build your base. For the most part, they don't do anything crazy, like crazy attacks off of the base, usually. Here, Momokin was kind of forced to set, send a one chain based on how he was building. So what happens is that now Delta has the resource advantage, and he wants to use it to send some garbage back and clear his garbage at the same time. So now Delta's free to kind of do some kind of attack that clears garbage at the same time. And because Momokin is behind in resources, it's hard for him to do any counter. And because he doesn't want to use too much more or he'll just fall too far behind. So now Momokin's at a little bit of disadvantage, but Delta wasn't able to clear all his garbage either, so it's pretty even. And again, they tend to be really flexible in the mid-game. So like, two purples would make a three-chain for Momokin. Clearing this garbage would make a three-chain for Momokin. You could add a red to make a four-chain. And you could start on the greens to make a two-chain and add a red to make a three-chain and potentially add other colors, so Momokin can kind of do anything. And then Delta as well, if he clears these blues, he's got a three-chain. He can add a purple to make a four-chain. He can maybe clear on the right side for something else, but he's not vulnerable or anything, and he has options to attack, but you wouldn't attack with those again because... The opponent would see it and they would counter it so that they like have these options but they aren't going to use them and then again you want to use something small so this one chain by itself it only sends two garbage but for example in this exact position if the garbage blocks something important that could just win the round because there's some big groups of three, uh, Delta would probably be safe in this situation, but any garbage here at the top of the field, like on the Mokin side, if it covers the blues or the greens, he might be out of plays, and then Delta can just do a follow-up attack and win the round. So like, once you get this high up, even the garbage from a one chain can be fatal, so that's why all you need is like a one chain to try to force your opponent to make the big move that you can then counter. But nothing happens just yet. And then Delta tries to do the one chain to force Momokin into a big move, but a two chain isn't that big here, and it's a really strong counter, so it's it looks like Delta's going to be forced into doing something big. But, so like, if you look at, if Delta clears these blues, he's got a four chain counter to this two chain, which seems good. But another thing that comes into play is like what you have left over and where you're. So once he uses this, it's hard to rebuild. Like it's hard to rebuild this part effectively. So Delta would have trouble there. And then the tail shape, maybe you could use it to attack. You actually kind of could. So there's an chance there but he wouldn't have like a great form left over and it would be tough to rebuild easily whereas 
if you're doing like attacks up here at the top that don't mess up this setup you have over here, then you can kind of just use them more freely to attack and defend with. So, um, another thing I was going to mention is like, like I was saying, Momokun has this counter, for example, Delta has this counter on the blues, but neither of them want to use that counter because it's tough to rebuild that part effectively. So that's more like an emergency counter or if the opponent overcommits to something, then you use your main counter and then and then it's okay to use it because the opponent overcommits. But instead of using their main counter, they want to also like build a second counter and a second attack at the same time while holding on to that main counter for if the opponent overcommits or gets into a tough situation. So like they're not attacking with this counter setup they have. They're like building something else and then attacking at that other spot and then Again, they're doing those small one and two chains to try to force the opponent to, like, maybe use their main counter setup and then counter it back. So there's the one, there's the two counter, and it looks like Delta's forced into a big move. But Delta doesn't want to use that big counter here. He wants to save it so that he's not, like, overcommitting. So then he intentionally makes just a small two chain and still takes a good amount of garbage, but he still has a setup there. So like, with two purples and a blue, he can send a five chain. So Momokin can't follow up immediately and take advantage of this situation because Delta can, Delta still has his main counter setup. He didn't use it. So Momokin right there was probably looking at clearing the blues for a five double, which would be extremely powerful but, like I was saying, Delta has the 5 chain off the purples, and he's going to have multiple draws as the 5 chain is going off, so he could potentially extend to a 6 chain and counter back and win the round. So even in a situation where Delta has like 2 lines of garbage on his field and seems mostly stuck, Momokin can't really do a big move because it'll still get countered by Delta potentially. So it's still a risk to go for any kind of big move. And that's why you see Momokin kind of hesitate because he was probably looking at it and then he probably thought it's too much of a risk here and he can't do it because he's like looking. So now he just has to take one garbage and keep playing. And then the same thing still applies. Delta still doesn't want to just randomly send his 5 chain because it's going to get countered by Momokin most likely. So he has to try to do something else so that he's not forced into sending a big move that gets countered. So now he's trying to make something else and then make Momokin do the big move first. So he sends a big one and that kind of puts Momokin in a tough spot. So, and then now it looks like maybe Momokin can't quite get a chain off that he wants. So... Now Delta goes with the big move after he's put Momokin in a tough spot, but Momokin still is <laughs> able to just convert it into what happens to be a main chain. So, like, even after all of this back and forth, small adjustments, <laughs> and this little bit of garbage, Momokin is still able to counter, like, the big move that Delta does. So that's how strong they are at making these counters like no matter what happens and that's why it's very difficult to ever actually attack unless you just notice they're in a situation where they really can't counter and it doesn't happen that often and then one last thing that comes up a lot actually is like hiding really important information in the ghost row so here if Momokin has the blue in the ghost row, it connects to his main chain. But if he doesn't have it there, then it stops and it's a counter, but it's probably close in size. I think Momokin's is a bit bigger than what Delta sent. So those two things require different responses 
where if it's a chain that sends back by a little bit, Delta wants to send like a two or a three chain that's pretty big to counter back. But if it's a main chain, Delta just wants to build up and build a bigger main chain. But if you don't see what they place in the ghost row, you don't know what it is. So, like, Delta might not know. I think Delta probably doesn't know whether it's a main chain or not. And sometimes you go by, like, the player player's tendencies. Usually they don't send their main chain here, so it's probably not a main chain. You might think something like that. But it connects to the main chain, and now Delta has a theoretical advantage where if he can make a chain that clears all of his Puyo, he's going to win the round, but potentially he didn't know that it was a main chain, or his swarm just got too messy, so he, this chain, he wasn't quite able to use everything, so even though like, it was a really good chain and he countered back, but because he left some Puyo on the field, um, that it, end up being why he's going to lose this round because, like, this is, like, a theoretical advantage situation, but he wasn't able to convert on it. And something I think is crazy is just, it's pretty common that this is the amount of effort you have to go through to win a single round. <laughs> it's like, sometimes, like, when I play... Even in B1, sometimes it's just like you do one really big attack and then the opponent takes the attack and fills up. But at this level, it's like you do a really small attack because you don't want to do a big attack and then the opponent does a small counter because they don't want to do a big counter and then they almost never fell to counter but then you won't, they almost like never fell to counter back on the counter or they can just take the garbage and dig and then you have to keep playing and then you send a, they send a big chain, and you send a bigger chain, but then they send a second chain, and you have to keep playing, and you have to send a second chain, and if you mess up at any point, you're going to lose a round. So here, like, Delta wasn't able to use every Puyo on his field to guarantee the win. Mumokin was able to use every Puyo on his field, essentially, and get the victory in the end. So basically... I'd say the big points are that they're pretty much always trying to force the opponent into a big move, and nowadays a big move is like a 4 chain or a 5 chain. So they're almost always going to have some kind of defensive counter setup, but they never want to use it unless the opponent breaks down their form or overcommits to something. And then they want they want to have that setup and then make some small attacks without using the their main counter setup to try to force the opponent into something and then counter that after they do it. And it's easy to say all of that, but to actually do it is just <laughs> extremely difficult. But that's part of what makes it interesting to watch. Anyway, I, if you haven't seen the Psycho League matches, I'd recommend you watch them. It's essentially the highest level of play that you could watch t today, and it's just on YouTube, so it's a bunch of league matches between the top players. In the very first season, sometimes I was kind of thinking, are they really going to be the top level, like Psycho means strongest, are they really the strongest, but now I think they've all really proven themselves, and they all really look significantly stronger than, like, all of the other top players, so, so I really feel like this is the top level of play you're gonna see anywhere, and I think they're still getting better, too, but, yeah.